What's up, you guys? Marty Schwartz here with Marty Music. Gonna break down this J.J. Kale song right now. And uh, it's in honor of his 50-year anniversary of his career. Uh, they've got a brand new uh, vinyl box set that's been remastered at Abbey Road Studios. And it's J.J. Kale's first eight albums and a bonus album, a 40-page book, a forward by Mark Knopfler. You know, just a beautiful piece of music that you can check out all in the link below. Also, huge shout out to JJ Kale's team for sponsoring this video because I love his music. And so I'm happy to teach it to you. Here we go. All right, I think of this tune as a variation of an E blues. So you've got an E chord. And you can make it E7 by taking your ring finger off. I'm gonna show you some variations on that. But let's just go to the basic structure right now. So E7 is kind of the home base. Do, do, do. Then G, A, back to E. You can play regular E anytime you want. So that happens twice, then the little turnaround, and then that's the whole the whole song structure, but I'll show you some kind of rhythm guitar concepts. So E E E E E E E E G G G G G G G G A A A A then the B B major or B7 All the way through. So check this out. There's this just great little rhythm device. It's in a lot of different songs. It's a it's played that kind of riff is played on piano a lot. So if you're in E blues, E E E. Along that you have this little double stop right here, which is the fourth on the G and the third on the B. Then the second fret G and B, then hammer on the first fret into that E chord. So now if the high E rings out, It's all good, right? Now I'm not playing the lower strings. I'm playing the top three. Until I get to the E chord. Now you could just focus on the G and B. Uh, on the whole E chord. Um, you could you could do it where your middle finger's on the fourth of the G and have the root right there on the fifth of the B. Or Now another thing for that E chord, a great E7 that's overlooked is taking that, what you normally have probably learned as a C7. So that's C7 up a whole step, it's D7. And then up another whole step, it's E7. And what's cool about that is you have the open E now as a root. 
and the high E, and you can take your finger off and let the open B ring out too with it. That's how I played an E root bar chord for G, and then the same thing for A, and know that B is up a whole step from there. So one other thing, which is I, I take from the Hendrix vibe, but but it's in other stuff. But he does that in Purple Haze. He adds a little thing in there. I mean, he's using his thumb. I'm not part of that thumb club. But anytime you have one of these E root bar chords, you can do this little thing. And any variation upon it. But the little kind of phrase would be visualizing that. And then as a substitution, you can cover the fifth fret B and high E, hammer on a whole step up on the B. Then I quickly switch my middle finger to that B string. So it's like. And my index is now on that, for instance, for A. So I'm switching to this shape so I can hammer on. And theoretically, it's okay if you don't know any of this stuff, but that's the two. And, and then that's the major third of A. You'll hear it in a D chord real easy without having to do fancy. So you're creating that sound, but as you know, from a bar shape. So. So if you have every bar chord, you have and it doesn't have to be the high strings first, you could go it could be any combination of the And 
then also when I was playing E7, you know, if you mute it a bit with your, and just squeeze down to get a more, that's how I was getting that funky sound. Obviously, like anything, you just got to play it a lot, practice it a lot. I couldn't do it when I first tried. I just kept doing it. It got a little better every time, but certainly not overnight. Um, and then I was combining, you know, what's so cool about E7, E dominant seven, is you have like your classic E7 shapes. That one's a little more exotic. There's so many combinations, but then you also always have the um, the six and the nine in there. And so then you, you have all these different combinations. Can't do it all in one tutorial for JJ Kale. So that's some stuff to just think about. Now, when you're jamming over it, it's really you just can treat it exactly like an E blues. Um, e minor pentatonic E blues scale, but something that's kind of fun. I mean, I really like the Jerry Garcia version of this. So you check that out. He's doing all kinds of wild noodling and soloing over it that I, I really love. But so you can, uh, think of it as E blues, but any of the chords you can kind of, for instance, like. You know, that's not just for rhythm playing. I mean, you could be soloing. So that little thing you heard, I was just specifically I was just playing through a B7 little arpeggio run that I that I know. Oh, sorry. Guess I don't know it, but. And so what that is, is I'm specifically choosing to outline the B7 chord, but the E blues works over all the chords because we just like that sound. But so if you see this, and specifically it's some kind of dominant, not, not major seven, but you know, or. you know, that bluesy sounding chord. You can look at that pentatonic extended run off of that, off of that root. There's the root again. But every time you get to the D note, you hammer it up a half step. But descending, when you hit the D, you still hammer up, not the opposite like this. And really all you're doing is you're, you're outlining a dominant seven chord with a little sus in there. If I played a G7. So mess around with all of that and 
just have fun, explore it. All right, hope you guys dug the lesson. Once again, huge thank you to the JJKL people for sponsoring this video. Don't forget about that amazing new box set. You can check it, check out all the info in the link below. Appreciate your support. Hope to see you again.